Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to continue this uh, the Monday uh, slate previews with the first of the two showdown slates. For those of you watching this in or out of order, uh, I already put up a uh, video for the two-game slate, which obviously the pricing is a little different and the approach is a little bit different. Um, but uh, I'm just going to do one also for each of the showdown slates. And similarly to you know, the usual process, I'm going to go through what I think the game script is going to look like. I'm going to go through some normal showdown theory and things like that. Go over who I think are going to be good plays. Throw in a couple of hoodoos. And then what we're going to do is have some fun and run a Saberson build and see what kinds of constructions we kind of come up with. Um, so again, this the showdown is just is different than a two-game slate in that, number one, the pricing is different. You need the captain. And, you know, you, you got to be a little more creative. Let's just put it that way. Um, you really do want to leave money on the table. You want to really sacrifice some degree projections in the name of uniqueness. Um, and yeah, the first thing I would say is that uh, it is probably a good idea to come up with, with a couple of different game scripts and create lineups accordingly. Saberson does an okay job of that, but not the greatest. So sometimes you might have to force some game script related uh, rules in and things like that. But first of all, for anybody who cares about my opinion of the game, um, I'm sure this is not going to be a particularly uh, wild take, but I think Buffalo is, is a very, very strong favorite in this game for a good reason. Uh, and they're probably going to win this game rather handily. I would say that I, I don't know what the, uh, I should, I should know what the total is, but whatever it is, I do feel it's going to probably go under. Um, I, I I don't know how exactly Tennessee is going to generate offense in this game at all. Um, I, I just to me, it feels like a really boring twenty-seven to ten game. That's would be my take. As a matter of fact, just for fun, if they offer it, I wonder what odds I can get an exactly twenty-seven to ten. Um, I would have to say I would I would need a thousand to one, right? Isn't that that's probably about right to get the exact score and the correct winner? I mean that seems pretty pretty unlikely. Anyway, so when you're constructing uh, you know uh, lineups, you want to kind of go by your game script. Now, if you don't believe that's going to be the, the, the case, then then construct accordingly. But I'm going to operate with the assumption that the game is a little bit of a you know. Kind of, kind of a stomping, but without that many points being scored. So, so you have to kind of put the, both those things together. The first thing that I would say um, about this game is that I, I, I think Derrick Henry is probably a poor play. I shouldn't say a poor play, but he is just someone that I'm going to fade. I, I don't, I just don't see him number one generating a lot of offense early. Because uh, Buffalo is very sharp. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna challenge Tannehill, and beat him. You know, Henry's by far their best option. And then later in the game, if they're behind by fourteen points, and what why, why you know what what's he gonna do then? So, I think the first thing that I would do is probably, for lack of anything else, I, I'd probably X out Derrick Henry completely. And, and when you do just something like that, you're automatically just you know, in, in good shape, if in fact, if you get it right, you know, because um, keep in mind, I mean, Tennessee, I mean, you have to play somebody from both sides, you know, so you can't just go ahead and say, well, you know, Buffalo's going to stop them. I don't want to play anybody. And that's why Derrick Henry could be, you know, the guys that people, one of the guys people play a lot because you have to play somebody and you have to play either two, three or one, or just at least one. And I see variations where people play just Derrick Henry, even if they're going to go 5-1 with Buffalo. Um, the the other guy from the Tennessee side, who I mean, obviously the quarterback makes sense, like Tannehill. But I'd rather play Tannehill in my 5-1s, you know what I mean? Uh, because I think Tannehill can run, you know, and, and if he locks into one touchdown or two, that plus his running, if he runs in for a touchdown, that's the really, really big. Um the, the other thing I would say is that the only other guys really from Tennessee 
at least based on all the, you know, the numbers, whatever that, that inspires me at all is, is number one would be, um, well, let's talk about this one first would be Robert Woods. So Robert Woods is extremely cheap. I, pres- I think he's got to be high owned. I mean, I'm looking at 20%. That just can't be. I mean, he's the cheapest guy from Tennessee who can actually do something, you know? And I, I believe that he's rather game strip script proof, you know, like they're going to go to him early, you know, as pro- I would imagine their main target. No, I don't know. Um, and yet if they fall behind, feel as though they have to go to him also. So, so, I think that Robert Woods is, in a weird way, I think the safest play on this board, um, with the exception of obviously with Tannehill. Um, just being game script proof is is kind of a big deal. So if you if you were bringing, if you're building lineups, you know, and you believe what I believe that Buffalo is going to, you know, do most of the, most of the lifting, um, I would limit my Tennessee exposure to to three to three guys. Okay, it would either be Woods. Tannehill or or the kicker, who is who? Uh, or Randy Bullock. Okay. And I would play some lineups with the three of them, but most of them with two and some of them with one. And I myself would would advocate for fading Derrick Henry uh completely and whatever. Now, again, we'll, we'll get to these later, but I'm sure there are all kinds of hoodoos and stuff. Like I'm looking at some at, 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 at Tyler, Kyle Phillips as an option here. Um, I'm looking at, let me see, is Kyle Phillips? See, he's not hurt, is he? Kyle Phillips is questionable, really? Let's see, a little bit of participation. So, oh, so he was very productive in week one. Yeah, six for, I don't know. I still feel as though Robert Woods would be the, the top guy. I don't know why, but you know. Um, so, and if he's out, then Robert Woods almost becomes like a hundred percent on. But no, no, that's not true. Because if Kyler Phillips is out, then some of these other hoodoos kind of come into play. Um, so, I don't know. I still think Robert Woods is kind of the best play here, uh, and I would prioritize him over the kind of. Um, what about Buffalo? Well, let's 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 state the let's state the obvious here. Um, that being that that Josh Hen- that Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs are the best plays. You know, they're most likely to score touchdowns. They're most likely to score fantasy points. They're going to be hundred percent owned. But those that those are the two best plays. Um, one thing that's kind of up in the air is the is the status of Gabe Davis, and if Gabe Davis is out, then 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 all this other stuff just kind of comes into play. That being, other receivers such as Isaiah McKenzie, um, he's probably in play anyway. But then Dawson Knox, who's in play anyway, becomes more viable just for more targets, and then you then you're in in business with like Jake Kumaro. I mean, he's like 200, you know, maybe he becomes in play. So we just have to look and, and see what happens. You have Jamison Crowder. He got work last week, so he could be in play. Um, now, when I say could be in play, I, I, I again, my thoughts on this game script is that it's going to be Buffalo will handle them, but I think it's going to be a 27 to 10 or something like that. So I don't think you need to cram in like all kinds of receivers and you know and stuff like that for Buffalo. I think you, I think it's kind of be a more of a boring type game. I think that Allen will probably get a, a rushing touchdown. Maybe he'll get a touchdown in Diggs, and then I think it's going to be one of these Buffalo running backs. I think that's the idea. I think you want to play either Singletary or Zach Moss or both. Okay, but probably not both. I would make sure to play the running backs. I think they're going to be a much bigger part of this game than they usually are for Buffalo, simply because I just don't believe Buffalo is going to need to put on the, the you know, put the pedal to the metal um, in the second half all that much. I think they know that they can get handle this game without, without showing their cards. Right. I think they could win this game without, you know, putting Allen into too much jeopardy. So I think it's going to be, you know, 
one of those two running backs certainly makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't think I'm going to need the kicker for Buffalo because um, Buffalo is very efficient. They, they don't, I, don't, I don't ever recall them not getting a touchdown when they're inside the 20. So I think that his upside is very limited today. Um, with the exception of just getting raw points, but I, I do, but the, but I mean, getting a but, you know, four what four extra points in a field goal in a thirty-one point game, but yeah, that's not going to be enough. If they score thirty-one points or more, I don't think the kicker makes optimal. Then then I think you're into that third and fourth touchdown for for skill position guys that won't you know that won't let the kicker get up there. So uh, I do also believe that the Bills defense is in play this week. Um, Tannehill is, you know, he doesn't have a lot to work with as far as skill position guys go. So you, you never know what can happen, especially with a pretty opportunistic Buffalo defense. It's going to have their ears pr- pretty much for the whole second half, just going after him. I do think the Buffalo defense is in play. Um, so, so overall, you know what I mean? Like that, that's, that's kind of where I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, at least my hand built stuff, um, playing, mi- I mean, certainly minimum three Buffalo, but mostly four and five. And then on the, you know, I would make sure to have a running back in every lineup. I would not play the kicker. I would not go too nuts with the with the receivers. I just don't think the four of them are going to get a touchdown. You know, I really don't even think three of them are getting a touchdown. I think you're going to get. Listen, this is this is not showing my knowledge of the, of the term a range of outcomes. I'm just saying what I think is going to happen like today, right? I think that Josh Allen will get one touchdown. I think Stephon Diggs will get exactly one touchdown. I think that one of the running backs will get one touchdown and then a fourth, maybe, maybe a fourth one will go somewhere else, but I'm not playing it that way. I would say three touchdowns, two field goals, 27. Now, is that good enough for the kicker? Six, six, seven, eight, nine, nine points. Good enough. I don't think so. Um, So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm running it back probably with, with what I said with either woods or the kicker. Or Tana, and I am Xing um, Derek Henry. Um, now let's see if Saberson somehow agrees with me. So what I did was I put the, the my projections into the Saberson kind of matrix here, and let's build. Uh, how many want to build fifty lineups? Let's build fifty lineups with uh, with these projections. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not making any rules. I'm not making any stacks. I'm not imposing my, my, my game script on anybody. I'm just saying, okay, give me all the Sims. Give me all the outcomes. Give me your 50 highest upside lineups that fit all the stuff that you guys do in the background. Let's see what I get. All right. So what I begin, Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't put my, uh, my own projections. in. Shoot. Um, well, it doesn't matter. Let's do this. So here, look at this nonsense. <laughs> this, is, this is the difference. Here we're getting all kinds of Tennessee nonsense. We're getting Randy Bullock in the captain, Zach Moss in the captain, Kyle Phillips. So we are getting a bunch of five ones. But suffice to say that these lineups are not what I would get. But I, I will just say this, that are you really going to put Tyler Bass in the cap in part of a 5-1 for Buffalo? I do like the run back. I just don't know if I can do it. Um, I, I'm curious to see what becomes of the hoodoos if and when Gabe Davis gets ruled out, though. I wonder if Jake Kumaro is going to get some uh, – get some love because I, I that's who that's who I'd be interested in probably somebody like that um but we'll talk about it we'll talk about it closer to closer to uh to lock I am going to be doing a show at about 5 40 hopefully going towards about seven so we'll get there right up until game time we'll we'll definitely have the Gabe Davis news by then so again really straightforward game script by me really straightforward approach by me but I think in those in those Tennessee runbacks, I think you can maybe get a little creative. And I think maybe, you know, for that third touchdown, if you're playing that way for Buffalo, you get a Diggs, you get a Singletary, and then just shuffle the others. You know, a Jamison Crowder, a Dawson Knox, a 
Isaiah McKenzie. I guess that's all fine, you know. Um, and then if Gabe Davis is out, then it, then it's Ole Ole and free. <laughs> Any then you could throw in a whole bunch of other guys. Um, but that'll do it. Uh, good, good luck tonight, and I will see you guys hopefully uh, if you show up at the uh, at the live stream at about five forty Eastern.